time. It's showtime. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Influences and References once again. Um, <laughs> my name is my name is Bjorken Benedictson from Audio Issues. Uh, I'm here to help you confidently finish your mixes so you can be proud to release and promote your records. If you want my mix translation cheat sheet, you can go to mixfinisher.com and download it there. As always, uh, I am interrupted by my co-host, Ed Charles. <laughs> there Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's not personal. I was just having a good time. Um, uh, yes, I'm, I'm Ed Charles. Hello. Uh, of Relief Tone and uh, edcharlesmusic.com. Is that correct? Edcharlesmusic.com. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about the creative process, uh, mixing, and uh, to start off with failure. I know. Bjorkman says, <laughs> right, we get together maybe. We're supposed to get together a half hour before we start to discuss this. <laughs> For the past few weeks, the time has gone from 30 minutes to 15 minutes. Today, it was like eh, 10 minutes, maybe nine. And uh, and I, I say, what are we talking about today? And Bjorkman says, let's talk about failure. So why on earth do you want to talk about failure? And folks, I'm happy to ask this question on all our behalf because I don't really know what he's going to say either. So why? Well, there are, there's an interesting journey that I'm going to try to figure out how to take you on. But it starts oh, yeah. with this book right here. This is called Audio Notes, the only audio production notebook. And do you know why it's probably the only audio production notebook? I can hazard a guess, but I won't dare. Because nobody needs a notebook. Okay, there you go. When you have a doll. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I, 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 wait a minute. I want to differ here. Not okay. that I'm going to go out and buy a copy of this, but I might. You never know. But yeah. I look. I don't even know what the link is to buy it. <laughs> I got a pen here. Maybe you could just send me a copy, Bjorg. Um, <laughs> because I do take notes. I got post its. All no. over the place. Here's some notes. Last the last mix I was doing, I got notes about what to cut, what not to cut. So I don't know if that's how you intended the book to be used, but well, so when I went to school, uh, I learned on an analog console like an SSL. Uh, we did use Pro Tools at the time. I didn't. I'm not that old to have gone to school where we we're still using tape. Uh, so I have no information on how to splice and dice tape. But we did use these sort of track sheets. And so I thought, you know, let's make a notebook that is sort of a track track sheet book where you can keep tabs on on your tracks and on your songs and all of that sort of stuff. And if there's anything I learned from it, it's that uh, you should not you should definitely always ask your audience what they want before you decide to make something that you think they need, because I would have saved myself a lot of headache by uh, just getting a hard no before I even created the product. However, I did learn a lot from the failure because I learned how to outsource manufacturing. I learned how to uh, hire de uh, designers. I learned how to uh, create a shopping cart online. I learned how to send out sales emails to, to people that did not buy the product in this case. <laughs> but uh that's i think i think is a very valuable mm. exercise or valuable thing to keep in mind is that inside failure is a lot of learning that you mm. can use to further develop um your successes inside and, failure i like that yeah uh that's the song title for your song maybe in august or something mm. and i'll get back to you <laughs> okay. a little too on the nose for me but i like the idea However, um, afterwards, after um, realizing that this would only sell about, you know, a handful of copies, maybe in the low double digits, <laughs> I was uh, not going to be able to pay my rent or even beer, get beer money from it. But I learned that maybe <clears throat> I should do something else, which means that going back to the drawing board, figuring out what else to do. And... I did actually come up with another idea for a product, which is mixing strategies, 
which is one of my first ebooks I released on audio issues. And that one was actually fairly successful. I realized that people did buy my, uh, my ebooks and wanted to know more about hmm. the information I had inside of, of the book. And uh, I mention this only because it is today I have a success calendar uh, that is yellow that lists out all of the releases that I've done, whether they're books or records or things of note, uh, so that I remind myself that uh, if I'm having a terrible day, bad day, feel uh, overwhelmed or under the weather, uh, I can always look at my success calendar and remind myself that in the past, I, <laughs> I uh, had done something good, even if I will never, ever accomplish anything again. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, and that, uh, that of course, mixing strategies is now discontinued as an ebook because it has been replaced with step by step mixing. Uh, now we're talking products. about success, folks. Yeah. This is so, one successful product. I didn't, I didn't know how successful it was. And then when I found out, I thought, what? Are you kidding me? Like the number one mixing book on Amazon or something like that? Am I, am I wrong about that? I, I think I got no. that. It's 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 continue continually or regularly, not continually. And well, no, how many years has it been available? Uh, its first edition came out in 2017. Second edition came out last year. Okay, so we're, you're three years in, and you're still number one. Yeah. Well, on occasion, we're gonna get one of those big foam fingers. <laughs> I'm gonna send you one of those, and you're gonna send me a useless notebook. But I've got a bunch of them. <laughs> Well, so. it might it might be time to redevelop uh, a notebook for audio engineers, but maybe I'll actually include the uh, musicians and audio engineers in the development of the product before I create it myself. <laughs> so, huh. yeah, and that's sort of that's sort of what I think about failure is it's just a stepping stone towards success. Yeah, um, but are you are you measuring failure by uh, like are, are we are you talking about financial success? and financial failure like you know you put a lot of time into this product this book let's say you learned x y and z lessons and you you enumerated those and we're glad you did and i'm glad you learned them um but <clears throat> pardon me but are we talking about failure because nobody bought the book it seems like we are yeah i guess well that's it's an interesting thing to talk about failure in that sort of way because you talk like in this case it was a failure as a product uh it did not succeed in any way um and my later products went on to be more successful but it does beg the question of how do you define success what does success mean uh, to you yeah. and the more and more uh musicians engineers and producers i interact with the i i define success in a different way i kind of define success in the success of the students and people that i interact with because mm -hmm. I'd I really enjoy uh, getting getting notified or getting an email telling me that you know uh, somebody's song has been released on Spotify and they couldn't have done it if if they hadn't read step by step mixing or I was I encouraged them in some way and being sort of self fulfilled as an artist uh, for them that really makes me feel better and so it's not just about selling a bunch of books obviously uh that is a factor in in making the engine run but uh the metric is the music more so than anything else and the amount of records that you guys release is more important to me than necessarily the amount of books um i sell although it is a delicate balance right well that balance is you know you it's like shifted also when the student starts to release material let's say mm -hmm. then they're the ones who are always checking the stats you know how right. many you know how many did i if in your case it's how many books did i sell let's say what how many shipped today or yesterday or this month but when you release something you go back and look how many people have listened oh it's at the same number as it was yesterday which becomes last week and the next week um or it, you know, or the or the number grows or something like that. But it's like um this, it's like a Facebook fantasy 
world that we live in <laughs> where yeah. it's where it's about the the little icon with the thumb you know the thumb icon and how many likes that something has gotten yeah and i got on the facebook uh the facebook kind of train or whatever you want to call it the fad um very late i remember my students and people i was working with at the time and they were you know younger than me and talking about facebook and the wall and you post and i remember thinking like whatever like i have no time for this or I don't get this. And then of course, you know, I came around, but by the time I did, I asked my students, Oh, I, you know, what are you doing on Facebook? Or, and they'll say, Facebook, we don't use Facebook. Facebook is just an alias that we maintain some sense of innocence for our parents who think uh, that that's right. what we use all the time. Right. So I think that's probably success for those people, you know, duping their, their parents. But Back to the the you know the the model of checking how many likes and how many listens and how many streams mm -hmm. uh, the work gets. This is a dangerous thing, I think, for a lot of people. Um, well, I think that it's also kind of uh, meaningless because the streams do pay out a, a, a negligible amount, an, an insignificant amount. Uh, the likes are. Maybe maybe they get you somewhere in the long run, but overall, those aren't the right metrics to f measure. Uh, you need to measure mm -hmm. metrics that help the momentum go uh, forward. So, in in business in the business case, the momentum is always going to be money or revenue. Uh, in sort of the artist case, it's more pieces of art or s songs recorded and 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 released, uh, because I think that if you keep creating something will happen because you're continuously creating a creative momentum and having something come and something will come come along with that if you just keep at it uh, you obviously have to be uh savvy at all of the different things that you need to do like mm, you know if you are going to try to promote and release your songs you also do need to be slightly hip to the fact that you do need to you know, navigate social media, set up your Spotify profile, uh, maybe find an audience, reach out to blogs that write about the type of music that you make, those sorts of things. Uh, it Unfortunately, there isn't going to be a label that comes uh, and saves you from the need for being a marketer. You have to kind of uh, assimilate that role within yourself as an artist. And these are sort of the two... Uh, battling uh, roles that artists and creatives have is <laughs> I don't know how often I've heard marketing so hard for me uh, and I feel so sleazy or I feel so it's like so boring or so annoying to do. Whereas to me, marketing is just sharing what I'm working on, sharing my story and trying to deliver some form of value to the people that show up and care to listen to what I have to say. <laughs> Seems like we're though always wanting that number to grow. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting. I wonder what the. It's sort of the uh, human. It's a very human syndrome of the never-ending pursuit of more, uh, continuously uh, running in the rat race, uh, never quite achieving what you have because you uh, can always figure out a way to get more. The pursuit of perfection is an interesting one, which is similar because there is really no perfection, which is we've talked about this before, is there's no mm -hmm. real perfection because uh, as soon as you think you've achieved perfection, you realize that you can just do one more thing or do it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think that you should do perfection in some form of cycle where there is an output and or a deliverable that uh, measures certain points in time so that you can look back on and to see your growth. Because mm. if you are working on the same album for five years, like, you know, uh, I mean, obviously people have done that. Trent Reznor has worked on his records for, for a long time. Yeah. I think D'Angelo is the first one I think of is like, yeah. there was a decade, more than a decade between voodoo and, uh, and black Messiah. Right. Yeah, and uh, I think the last Tool album, a Tool album, there was a Tool album that came out this year or, la or last year, 
and that was the first album since i think Ten Thousand days which came out in 2007. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, roger waters yeah same same thing like he has four solo albums maybe five solo albums and that's since 1979 i think right but those are anomalies those are outliers and mm -hmm. sort of uh exceptions to the rule because when you are roger waters you can take as long mm -hmm. as you want because the dark side of the dark side of the moon royalties are still streaming or <laughs> still coming in oh yeah and he, he's made a career and a meal of the of the wall right you know yeah. uh, let's Go like on let's take it on tour you know um <laughs> yeah yeah i saw i saw roger waters actually at, uh, in 2007 at the ross gilder music festival was it 2006 2006 i think hmm. and uh which was the same time i saw tool so it's kind of a funny coincidence that but hmm. That is that is the, the ex exception to the rule. You can do you can take your sweet time if you are already successful. But for indie musicians and bedroom producers that are trying to get started or have uh, you know have the process down, but now just need to start uh, pushing the pushing the snowball down the hill, not up the hill, because they've learned they've learned the tools of the trade. Maybe mm. it is actually. Uh, you need to release regularly because it is a moment in time that you can look back on to to basically measure your growth as an artist. Mm. Uh, that's why I think what you do it with regular releases is so cool, and um, because you have, you know, you can you can really see your progress, or and you can also see mm. the basic memory in time. Like this is the song I released. You know back when and then you can probably tell a story about uh what was happening during that time it's a it's a it's a memory anchor in time that is one of your art artistic creations that i think is very cool mm -hmm. yeah it has a snapshot sort of effect yeah. yeah um yeah yeah but i'm <clears throat> doing the single thing every month is um it's a different it's very different than my original approach, which is from the album um, perspective, yeah. because the whole idea of an album, it is a collection of like a mosaic. It's not just one tile. They right. create a larger picture. And I've always been a big picture kind of person. Um, and so it's hard to see the big picture um, or even or even create one. I mean, when you're kind of living hand to mouth in in a in the way of releasing singles. Now it's probably a very poor analogy because I'm not I'm not depending on my royalties or any sort of money coming from what I release every month. Uh, quite the contrary, um, I release it in you know in spite of the fact that I don't that I don't get uh, a, a, any real benefit from it beyond my own, um, which right. is really. I think the big benefit for me is the practice of doing it and of sharing it with uh, the few, the few and the, and the stalwart people who are, who are, you know, interested with a capital I, yeah. there's a lot of interested with a small I, and then they're not even interested, but act like they are. And they, you know, you tap the Instagram thing twice and it yeah. makes a little heart tap, tap, heart, heart, <laughs> heart, 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 heart. It's like a little heartbeat. Heart, 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 uh, and you don't even look at the damn stuff. I mean, oh god, I hate that. Anyway, <laughs> it's the world we live in. They have yeah. apps. I didn't know this until recently that they, you can buy apps that will like things for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a terrible marketing strategy. Oh uh, my god. Uh, I I like to have a long term view on creating an audience and growing a following and mm -hmm. building something valuable. And you know what isn't valuable? robots that whose only purpose is to like a picture based on an algorithm <laughs> i know now if that's your if that's you know i don't know i can see the people making this app obviously it's an easy profit because vanity and ego these things don't go away they sell huge hugely hugely um but if you're if you're buying this app and using it like what's the end game here like what, what's the goal well 
I mean, as somebody who is very familiar with the startup process, my wife is a CEO of Startup Tucson, an organization that helps uh, small businesses and startups. A lot of these end games, especially Silicon Valley, is to get acquired. And uh, so, so that's you, make, so you basically you want to make yourself big enough and attractive enough and kind of mm -hmm. beautiful enough yeah, at, yeah. To, to some larger fish yeah. that is like, look, it's a free lunch. Yeah. They built it. And then. Yeah. And then it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And that big fish becomes such a big fish that it becomes a public fish, at which point the public has to believe in it. Uh, otherwise, the public loses the money. So, uh, yeah, but we're, really, really, we're talking about places like Amazon putting businesses, like we're just wiping out businesses. Period. I was hearing about diapers.com and how Amazon undersold diapers. <laughs> it seems like such a shady thing to do. It's like, that's what they did. They do like, and it wasn't just with diapers, but this was the example I was listening to. And, right. you know, we're going to undersell di the diaper companies, you know, <laughs> diapers.com. We're going to undersell them and we're going to take a huge loss yeah. because we're going to, we're just going to own that business in a year. And that's exactly what happened. Right. Well, so that's what we're talking about here. Little fish getting consumed yeah. by big fish who yeah. nobody can consume. Right. Because they are just vacuuming like yeah. we're like ants, <laughs> and it is a gigantic hoover, and it is hoovering us. It becomes this big galactus type earth eating persona. And uh that's uh that's a good analogy for capitalism. All right, welcome everyone. We yeah. are doing influences and references. And if you uh, send us your address, we can send you some razor blades <laughs> for next week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be splitting harvest. All right. Uh, have uh, as use. Ah, oh, man. Well, my name is Bjorkman, so I get at least one butchering of name uh, per person. But he's here from Algeria. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, for welcome. Watching. That's so great. That's great. And the uh, UK. And the Beat Stelling is here, which I know we Stelling. have now realized yeah, his real myself. name is actually Simon. Don't oh it wasn't me, Simon. It wasn't me. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> and then Bill Reese says, uh, talking back to the likes thing. This likes thing is not something I've ever done. Really don't believe in it. Reminds me of being in school when I was six years old. The teacher gives you a gold star. That's 60 years ago. Yeah. No, that's that's uh I mean it's getting a gold that. star is is one thing because it does when you are when you are young, uh, getting positive encouragement and positive feedback yes. is uh, is valuable because it is a great way to uh, grow. Instead of being uh, lambasted for all the bad things you do, it's actually easier to encourage positivity, positivity, uh, so that people s see that that's a better thing to do. Uh, something I learned at a very, very uh, young um, adult, well, young adult age when I my one of my first jobs as a quote unquote adult was is uh, was as a youth leader in an element in his elementary school in iceland and we handed out these little birds they were these cards they had these birds on them and they you handed them out kind of like currency for you know a job well done if they were showing up doing doing things that were appropriate behavior which oh. is you know just one another form of Orwellian. Uh... <laughs> so, can I turn into like a bunch of birds to like slug somebody or something like well, that? Well, I think you could get. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, you you could get uh, something for it, but you know, it's really just uh, a conditioning tactic, honestly. Wow. <laughs> well, all I know is I got real birds here, folks. Where I live, I'm a lucky sucker, man. I got beautiful birds. I got space and uh, air, garden. Just put the garden in again for the year. So, do you so garden nice. a lot? Do you if yeah. you want to tickle your creativity? Uh, it takes a good deal of energy, that's for sure. Um, and it reminds it reminds me of the following lesson, which is basically set attainable goals and pace yourself. <laughs> right. right don't don't weed whack the entire you know block uh, or even the entire driveway which is at least the football field long don't do that in one day or only do that in one day so um 
But yeah, mixing is like that for me too. Thinking about, you know, how much, you know, biting off side, you know, eat oh. human bites. There was a, <laughs> there a commercial when I was a kid for a play called Gemini. And one of the lines in the play was eat human bites. Um, yeah, this guy act, eating on stage is huge spaghetti, a mouthful of spaghetti. Take yeah. human bites. Um, so yeah, taking human bites is important. Yeah. Well, speaking um, of mixing, I was mixing yesterday, and mm -hmm. uh, I think everything I did to the tracks made them sound worse. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> so, so if anybody wants to learn more about mixing, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but I had a really great track. sounded sounded super awesome. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, was balancing it out, and then I probably went overboard with processing and trying out different tips and tricks. I was actually experimenting and demoing some plugins, so it was inherent in that experiment. But I listened to the song yesterday. And I was uh, and I was like, oh, this. I think it just got worse. And then mm -hmm. I listened to this morning, and uh, I did. I didn't give myself as hard of a time because I thought, you know, it really just needs a little extra separation in the space, you know, in the 3D image. And then the guitars need to need to be not so in the way of everything else. And uh, so not all the work was in and was in vain, but wasn't a total failure. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, but I did feel like that at the time, which is yeah. uh, something that people probably suffer from a lot of uh they do one thing uh poorly once even though they know they can do it uh well most of the time and they oh man i made this loaf of bread today it. that looked flat it was like i was like what happened to this bread like <laughs> I, I i got really good at breaking bread and like i have my technique and i and uh i think it's because it got so warm here like I, it's it's in this 70s mid 70s and 80s and um, it was just so wet, and every time I sh I shaped the loaf and I turned the loaf out after it proofed, and it just went <laughs> like on the counter. And I was like, "Well, I got to shape this sucker again. I got to tuck it back in, make it together." And I did, and I had to get the flour on my. It was flour everywhere because I'm I'm just a. And I kept thinking, "Sticky? Why is it so sticky?" So I got to think about that. But yeah, the tried and true methods don't always work which i guess means they're not true they're definitely tried that's for sure well um, sometimes things work sometimes they don't uh, i was watching a video of uh, with michael brower who is a very famous mixing engineer and he says you know his browerized method which is a very particular way of uh doing parallel busing uh he said you know it works a lot of times but sometimes it just falls apart and doesn't work at all so <laughs> You know, even, all methods have exceptions, I believe. So mm. I guess uh, the, the moral of that story. Did I ever mm. tell you that uh, my first my first uh, actual job was at a bakery? Uh, baking bread? Mm. Well, yeah. actually washing dishes. Oh. Let me, let me oh, so you can give me some tips later on about like what the hell happened here. Yeah. Patience. <laughs> oh, I got patience. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, one of the that's actually where I learned one of my best lessons in uh, in the music industry and something I uh, am trying to very hard to put into this book that I'm trying to hack together. But it's that I worked with this guy who was uh, a baker by morning and uh, a rock star by night. So he would play the uh, the music, play the touring circuit, play uh, big, uh, big shows and, and, and things like that had a lot of really great songs on the radio it was a, uh, was, uh, was, was, I admired this guy a lot and I asked him for like, you know, how do you get started? Uh, what's, what's the, what's the road to success in the music industry look like? Even though I obviously disregarded the fact that he had a day job as a baker too, yeah. but, uh, you were told me that the only real currency in the music industry is the song because you're really only as good as the songs you work on and the ones you release and, uh, and those sorts of things. So I always think that the song is the most important part of production. It doesn't really matter how the kick drum is EQ'd, even though it should uh, have a specific sound depending on the song, but everything is always dependent on the song. And I think that that's something that uh, people 
gloss over when they may think that oh i'll just fix it in the mix you know uh thing yeah, is that you can very dangerous you can actually not fix it in the mix and the song i was mixing yesterday was perfectly great when i didn't hadn't mixed it and i just made it worse so <laughs> so it's really just about the song and uh the production of the song that it, it, that matters more than necessarily how you how you tweak how you mm. tweak the instruments Hmm. So. Remember the story about John Lennon and uh, Imagine recording the piano for Imagine? Right. They were, you know, ready to do it. And they had this, you know, beautiful grand piano. And, uh, he, you know, he was playing it and he's like, this just sounds wrong. It sounds too grand, man. And they were like, well, and they moved the mics and they, you know, did whatever the hell they did. And then he just went, you know, everyone come, come with me. And he went down the hall to the little closet where there's this banged up upright piano that, they would just use for practice room yeah. and they threw a mic on it and he played it and it's, you know, the rest is history. It's what we listen to. It's what it's, what it's, it's, it's imagine. Yeah. And fun fact about that. I don't know how it was, uh, what exactly made it so that it was such a hissy recording, but it was very, very, um, there was a lot of high end hiss on the recording and in fact, if you listen closely, the intro that's just the piano is actually ha has no high end because it's all filtered out. And then mm -hmm. it's automated back in when the rest of the when the vocals come in and all that. So it's hidden behind the rest of the instruments. So, mm -hmm. so much of <clears throat> mixing and just art making is problem solving. Yeah. Or like either or like making mistakes living with the mistakes fixing the mistakes uh then realizing they're not mistakes after yeah, all. <laughs> I, I try if if i can i try to embrace them so that the accident of like i move let's say an item you know i move uh, something in the mix uh and i put it in the wrong place which i do a lot you know a, a guitar lick or a snare hit or something a background vocal and it won't be lined up right and i'll hear it and i'll be like what is that's wrong oh Wait a minute. <laughs> I think that sounds that actually sounds cool. Let me repeat that later. Or sometimes I I just don't repeat it at all. I've noticed listening to music how um, there'll be a there'll be like I don't know a tom hit or some one unique thing that I notice in early verse, let's say, or a chorus, and then I look for it again. I listen for it again. I listen for it. Never happens again. Right, and I'm like, mm. but. <laughs> It's got me engaged as a listener, so. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of comments here. I should probably yeah, yeah. Uh, let me let, let me. Uh, Alex, yeah. who is uh, actually a new insider, uh, joined today. Uh, hoping oh. to see him uh, oh. soon in the insider community. Mm -hmm. He asks, when you acquire new gear uh, plugins, do you find it tempting to use them on your next project? Yes, absolutely. This is. Uh, this is not if I get a new plugin, it uh well I sometimes I permanently update the mixing template with it until I realize that I don't like it and then I take it out and then re-save the mixing template. Uh, I have a few new plugins that I'm working on and I created a uh, or not working on I have a new few plugins that I'm working with and I created a new mix template with those plugins in there and mm. uh, it was you know it helps to experiment with something new. And so I, I definitely tend to tend to use use them as soon as I get them. Try to find a place for them, uh, if only to understand how they work, because sometimes sometimes they're really good at you know one thing or something, and then you pick up that trick and you maybe it doesn't always work in every mix, but mm. you pick up that trick and you keep it um, uh, behind the ear, as they say in Icelandic. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Bill Reese asks, I use old school gear analog mostly and just use the computer record media tracks only. So my question is, are any of your courses at audio issues for older person like me? Mm. Um, I predominantly uh, teach mixing in the box and recording in the box. So you will need a computer or and an uh, audio software in order to um, in order to get the most benefit out of it however if you are if you're working with uh eq or compression or any sort of processors in general 
uh, the fundamentals of working with them are sort of the same. So you can mm -hmm. definitely pick up a lot of stuff and but you would have to sort of adapt it to how your workflow is because mine is um, very much in the box. Mm. But if you record MIDI tracks, you might have to process MIDI tracks or you convert them to audio, at which point you're in the box or and hopefully using a computer. So it might be very helpful. Hmm. Uh, Ross has a tip for you. Hydration oh. is usually an issue if your bull won't maintain shape. Yeah, so. I was thinking that same thing. Uh, thanks, Ross. I was, you know, thinking there's just so much humidity in the air. And I checked my, you know, I checked my... Uh, my recipe basically, I was like, did I use too much water? And I was like, maybe I used an ounce too much. Not a, an ounce or half ounce. I don't know. Thanks, Ross. I'm going to try again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Or sooner, depending on how bread, how long this bread lasts. <laughs> and Simon says the parallels between what we do and photography, Photoshop are inescapable. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, this reminds me of... Ian, uh, one of Ian, Ian Shepard's <laughs> post on mastering. How uh, mastering uh, is basically Photoshop. Photoshop for audio. Let's yeah. say it together. Yes, yes. Yeah. Photoshop for audio. We should have Ian out here. Get him out in one of these. Oh, I, I bet he'd jump on here. That'd be, that'd be no problem. Hmm. He's, he's a nice old chap. He's a he's a fine chap. <laughs> what a fine lad. But now he's a fine chap. Yeah. Um, feel, feel free to chime in in the comments whether you're on Facebook or YouTube uh, with any comment, question you may have, um, anecdote that you may want to add to our ramblings uh, is fine because it helps us uh, ramble on. Yeah, well, we only see each other really once. We see each other Fridays for Audio Issues Insiders. Yep. Um, but um, we don't see each other after that until today and then I don't know. We get the kind of chat. So yeah. about audio um, issues inside the insiders program, mm -hmm. I want to know how's it going? Like you have, you know, you've got your, you've opened it up. Yeah. You've got some members, you know? Yeah. So, you know, how's it going? Brief, give us a brief. Cause I'm sure people are going to be like, Oh geez, don't, <laughs> don't let it be a commercial. And yeah, I don't, yeah. I do not want it to be a commercial. I despise them. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to try to my in line here. my video sales letter right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put that right next to the computer and you, know, you can do a little cold reading from it. Anyway. Yeah. And, and if you don't become a member by five minutes from now, everything will go away. But we wait. Have, it used to be the elephant with the tusk, not the tusk, the trunk. And on, on television, the trunk would go on and off. And they, <laughs> did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Report that when you call in and you'll get this free Tupperware or something. So. Yeah. No, but in all, in all seriousness, uh, I'm very excited about Audio Students Insiders because it is, it's full of really, really cool people that I am happy to call my members and my friends like Ed here, like Simon, like uh, Alex who just joined because it allows me to interact and help them um, create the best music that they can they can create uh i like to be very i like to be encouraging i like to uh spread positivity and help help them uh be confident and proud of the things that they are working on if there are things that they need to work on before things are perfect then that's something that we do in the community there um so I'm really excited about my members because they're all over the place. They're all over the world. First of all, yeah. we yeah. have uh, Bob's in Ohio, Bob's uh, in Nick's Akron, in the yeah. UK, Simon's in the UK. You're in uh, New York. Uh, Constantine is in in Berlin. Berlin. Uh, huh? We got uh, a Dane today, uh, and yeah. uh, so they're they're all over the place for sure. Uh, even even Rebecca up in Phoenix, she's just uh, up the street from me, basically compared compared to somebody in Berlin, and uh, and then we've you know even all the way to Australia. So we have yeah. people all over, and they're all working on really fun music and very diverse music. What mm -hmm. would you say? So like in a typical Feedback Friday, we have one of your songs, which uh, defies genre, but they are basically jazz pop uh, with a little bit of rock mixed in there. We don't know, folks. <laughs> uh, we have Bob who's working on more harder rock stuff. Yeah, he's like very guitar-oriented. Yeah, uh, 
very groove, good guitar. very groove oriented yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sort of ha has a little bit of the sort of guitar elements of of imagine dragons and and that sort of sound mm -hmm. uh very very cool uh vocalist as well mm -hmm. we have simon he's working on uh electronica basically yeah it reminds me of caribou's work uh something he and i've kind of chatted about so yeah yeah he does that and he and does then, really i wish i could make music like that simon i know you're listening so i'll tell you this right to your face so to speak i wish i could do what you do <laughs> that's just not i don't know how to i don't have those skills maybe i'll learn them from you or from constantine is also in that genre yeah um, yeah he my, makes mine is more like how do i make just me in the studio sound like a whole band Right. You know, how do I have? How do I make it sound live and rich and spontaneous? Um, because that's that's kind of where my heart is. Right. But uh, but and Simon that, and Constantine is, and Tim too. Tim yeah. in the group. Yeah, yeah. They are, everybody's making very diverse music, and I like. I'll echo your sentiment. Is like I can't do what you guys do. I can, mm -hmm. I can mix uh, well, and uh, and I can, but and I can do the, the that part of the production process but my role is really just to be uh encouraging and trying to get you to uh get over sort of the self-doubt and anxiety that we as creatives all share so that we get to the point where we can be proud to release your music or release uh yeah release our music so that's sort of the goal with insiders is to be uh i was <laughs> i was called uh, today gary tobin who is actually the a guy, uh, he's a jazz player. I mixed his song a few months back, and I'll be doing a mix walkthrough of his song for in August, I believe, that uh, drops in in the insiders community there. But he basically called me a life coach for artists, which is a, a nice way of putting it because I'm just here to make sure that you learn what you need to learn in order to get the results that you want to get. Yeah, that's a great compliment. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what about you? What do you think of the insiders community? Um, I think that the bar is high in there, man. That's what I think. <laughs> That's what I think. I think I don't want to, I don't, you know, I don't, uh, oh, I don't bring in my duds. As you know. <laughs> I don't like bringing in duds. Um, but you know, you never know what you're going to, what people are going to think. But um, I always, like you were just saying, I always aim to be proud of my work. Right. Um, no matter what that is, even uh, obviously, if you've been listening to this one today, breaking bread, yes, it's it got to me. You know, I was like, "Damn, what has happened here?" So I did some research, and Ross gave me this tip, and I'm gonna go back to the drawing board because I want to do my best work, um, and I try to do that all the time in the garden, um, up here in the studio, w whatever. You know, even emails. I'm writing emails, and I find myself editing an email. You know. <laughs> Because I, I'm like, oh, no, it's, if a hyphen would be a better, you know. Um, so I try to do my best work. And in that room, the virtual room of uh, Feedback Fridays of the Insiders, the bar is high. Um, and it's not just the songwriting um, and the arranging, the composing, all those elements. It's that one person is doing all of those things. Yeah. I'm not the only person who is you know, who starts the day with nothing, right. nothing. No. And by the end of, let's say a week, two weeks, there's this new thing. And I've done my best to make it beautiful. Whatever that is, you know, whether it's a, you know, a song that obviously is a, maybe it's um, a ballad and it wants to be beautiful, or it's this kind of messy, grungy, and that is, Oh, can totally be beautiful too. So I don't mean to use the word beautiful to just mean in a romantic, sentimental kind of way. Um, but everybody in that program that I know about uh, starts with nothing yeah. and comes in and it sounds just awesome. So yeah, we got uh, some really talented people in there. Um, and I mean, I, I appreciate the high bar because uh, it just... If if you if you set high standards for yourself, uh, you're more likely to to create great stuff. Mm. I think that you know if you it goes back to some Ira Glass quote that I read of, of 
you're trying to do something that is similar to the masters that you get inspired by. And uh, if uh, and at first you can't really compare the two because your your skill level is too low, but you should always keep at it and you should get encouragement. You should learn from the mistakes, iterate, work towards creating more and more and more until there's going to be a moment where you have assimilated all those skills and you have become a person that has this multifaceted skill set of being able to maybe write, record and produce and uh, and mix your music and then pr proudly promote it too. There are obviously some people in there that don't necessarily do everything on their own, although there are many. Uh, some people are are the audio guys in their bands for instance they mm. they maybe record mm. the songs uh but they have outside collaborators that they work with but uh at the same time i feel like if i know how to do all these things there's no reason others shouldn't be able to figure it out and if i know it i might as well share what i think about it and how to do uh, what i've done so far mm. you know i like um aligning myself with great musicians and great producers and engineers that are working on cool music. And if I can help elevate them to the next level, I know that I've done my job well, because I think that is, that makes a bigger impact than just uh, writing my own music, because I'm not, that's not really my creativity. My creativity is more in the actual writing, writing of, you know, books, mm. articles, and those sorts of things, and mm. then helping others achieve you know, the next level with their musical impact. And another quality about everybody in the insiders that I noticed is um, there are no, uh, there are no assholes. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I guess I could say that. Um, there are no assholes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody's very generous. Everybody's very, very uh, precise. They say uh, what they think. Um, it's not always, oh, you know, pat on the back. Sometimes it's pat on the back. And um, that thing in the chorus that doesn't really work so well, yeah. Or it's a little too loud for me, or you know, it's, and and you you get real feedback from uh, from the group. It's a lot like um, um, like oh, I can't remember the name of it, but artists um, like a crit group, you know, right. like where you where you you're coming together with like minded, uh, like uh, people at a similar level of skill. Um, a, there's a certain mastery that's been attained. And um, and you're you're sitting at the table with people who who have uh, who are worth listening to, right? Um, well, so and that goes back to sort of how I was brought up in education. Even though I don't have a degree in education, I've basically been a teacher for a very very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and it goes back to, or and it aligns with my uh, my actual core values, uh, because as Audio Issues is a business, it does reflect certain values that I want to keep alive. And one of them is positive reinforcement of not and, and you and not being a dick to other people, because especially in the insiders group, there is no amount of money that is worth it to me for you to be able to be an asshole in my community. That's just yeah, not yeah. gonna happen. And so, and like, so one of my core values is positivity. And this is very, you, it, this is easily found just on the audio issues website because the, one of the core values is positivity. And we reject the negativity of the gear sluts of the universe who tried to drag people down instead of build them up. We believe you can make music from your home studios and we strive to give you the confidence you need to proudly release and promote your recordings. Whether you're a home studio musician producing your own music or a professional engineer working with clients. And then again, one of the other values is playfulness because I don't take myself too seriously and I don't think anybody else should either. Life is too short and everybody should enjoy it. Uh, so I try to make things fun and slightly humorous so that you are entertained and, uh, and informed at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of, you know, that and that all sort of coalesces into what I feel like Audio Issues Insider should be. Mm -hmm. uh, you so. attract you attract these people though. I mean, it's not luck that there's, you know, no real jerks in there, you know. Yeah. It's not it's not luck. Um yeah. and it's not everybody else, you know, giving them the cold shoulder going, "Oh, I don't like this person." Um that's just you don't attract those people um and 
uh, I'm, I'm sure we can unpack that, but I don't think we need to. Right. Uh, so, but right. I, I, I mean, am seeing comments. We got to get to these because I don't want to leave people hanging. Right. Uh, right. As much as I'm interested in everything you have to say right, right now. Sure. But, but go ahead. Um, did you want to finish a point? I'm sorry to interrupt. You. No, it's just uh, uh, there's there's time for snark and cynicism and sarcasm, but as long as it's good natured, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, Cool. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, so uh, Ross asks, what's the age makeup of your insiders? Uh, I feel like it's mm. late 20s. I feel like isn't isn't Eric about. Yeah, probably somewhere around there. Yeah. To, um, uh, to probably 60. And yeah. Up. Yeah. So kind of spans a pretty wide, uh, wide range. Uh, yeah. So. And then uh, Alex asked how many people are in the Friday call generally. So we have about a core group of seven. I'd say seven, yeah. And um, and then Simon, to answer your question from earlier, uh, he uh, he doesn't really know how to, how he makes the music he does either. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just trial and error. Uh, but mm -hmm. he says Insider says moved me along miles ahead where I was a year ago. So mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, I really enjoy uh your jams and your music and it's it's a lot of fun to listen to alex one of my other co coaching students he's not an insider currently but uh, i have worked with him uh mm -hmm. to help him improve his online presence and uh, uh web presence and sort of uh in a more career oriented capacity yes music production in the creative process this is my jam how do you guys go about channeling your music and developing your ideas towards completion jam. you want to take this one Jam. I like that. This is yeah. my jam. Um, I don't know how to take this one. How do you go about channeling your music? Okay, that's one question. Mm -hmm. and developing your ideas towards completion. That's another question. I don't know what you mean by channeling your music. Maybe um you, you know, Bjorkvin, you have a relationship with Alex. Yeah. Well, basically, I think he's asking what is, yeah, what is he uh, asking? how do you how do you go about creating the music that you create? What is your creative process? Ah, okay. Um, it's, it's di oh, I hate to say this, Alex, but it's different for every song, <laughs> but there are things that are similar. Um, I either have a song that's written, like I write the song, you know, and I sing it in my iPhone, you know, which I've talked about before. I chat in there and sing it because yeah, it, yeah. it strikes me, let's say it, you know, lightning strikes and I reach for it and, and sing in there. And I usually don't have any lyrics or have one lyric. Yeah, um, one line or something. Yeah, one line or one image. Um, and I, I I do, I write them down on these on these, on these post-its. I write down the the image. Then um, um I I have I've developed this kind of process of kind of free free writing. But when I free write, there are there are two ways of doing it. One, just stream of consciousness writing. Mm -hmm. I don't do that as much. The second way, and this is the way that I've kind of naturally do it. It's like, um, it's like writing verse. It's like writing blank verse poetry or, you know, rhyming couplets or whatever, whatever the scheme is. But as I'm, as I'm writing, I'll think of a subject, you know, uh, springtime. I had that song, the latest song, uh, springtime. Yeah. And, just listened to it earlier today, actually. Oh, that was you. You were the one person who listened to it today, probably. <laughs> yeah, I gave you a double tap like. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Go out and listen to Springtime and like it. No, no, no. Um, but I remember when I wrote, when I was writing that, the image that struck me was not knowing that it was springtime. Like I woke up and I realized, oh my God, <laughs> it's been a long, hard, lonely, cold winter. Um, and it's still cold, but it's officially springtime, folks. And you know we're quarantined, which we still are, folks. I just want to let you know, we still have a pretty huge pandemic on our hands. Um, and this was when the whole world, but definitely country, was more in hunkered down spirit. And it was the idea of looking out the window at spring out there while I'm still in here, <laughs> in here. Um, and that image got me through the entire song. Um, how many verses are there? I think there are three verses. The chorus, the chorus repeats, um, and there's a bridge because I am very fond of bridges. Um, and 
I remember writing the lyrics, what became the lyrics. Um, I always write much more than I use. Yeah. That I end up using. So I do a lot of culling. Um, yeah. But going back to like, not stream of consciousness writing, but rhythmically rhyming. Um, sometimes it's not rhyming, but I can hear the rhythm as I'm working on, as I'm typing it out. I know that I need a, I don't even think in this way, but I know that I need a three syllable word here, or I know that, 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 that I want to pick up note into the, into the first word, let's say. Um, and so the structure will kind of, it'll kind of get a melody in my head, even though the, the melody doesn't have necessarily have notes. Yeah. Right. So it's kind of a rhythmic melody, or maybe there'll be one line in there. Where I'm like, oh, that has a melody to it with pitches. Yeah. And then the next day or later that day, but usually it's the next day or two days later. And it's kind of a test. If I can remember, you know, this is what do I got after a day, you know, this day, two days later, right. I open it up and I go, what is this springtime? And I got these stanzas in front of me. And as I read them, they will either remind me, they'll say to me, Ed, this is how I want to be sung. This is how I want to sound. Or it'll it'll be just be a bunch of words on a piece of paper. And it'll be my job to find a way to uh, to get them talking or yeah. abandon it and move on to something that's more interesting to me. But so, I would say seven times out of 10, the words remind me of like, oh, this is the melody you were thinking of here. Or this is this is the rhythm. So you so, basically claw your way through creativity until a song pops up on the other side. I don't, I don't ever feel like I'm clawing, <laughs> but I, I don't, can't tell if you were joking, but um, I never feel like I'm desperate for it. And if I do, I just quit. Like that's not a good place to be. Uh, like I quit that day or I'll, or I'll turn my attention to something else. That's more fun. Um, for me, it's gotta be enjoyable. Like I, I, I was writing a song the other day and it was, it's done. It's a done song. And I was in the process of recording it and it's a simple song. And I had the guitars recorded and I decided, uh, I don't like this. <laughs> I don't really like this. It's not so much fun right now. Um, so I just, um, I just put it away and started something else, entirely something else. And maybe I'll go back to that. Yeah. But I was not feeling it. It was not, I don't know. Bill, Bill Reese actually comments here uh, about the creative process because he, he said he was uh, it uses mostly analog gear. So it's an interesting uh, comment that creative process making music that moves you and others have always been a deep mystery. It's my in my opinion, but too much effort spent on a computer only serves to dilute that elusive creative spirit. So, yes, um, totally. you can look at a computer as sort of a um, sort of too strict and too you have to open up too many things and put too many things together you, you want to get into a state of flow as fast as possible and waiting for the computer to boot up and it, it adding things uh like taking too much time to do that i can totally and totally understand that so yeah. um well, and then alex uh that you've definitely answered this question too too satisfactory because he's he'll probably join us on the call sometime soon Oh, I don't know if that was a result of of, of my rambling, but uh, I don't know. I'll be glad to have you in there, Alex. It'll be cool to meet you and listen to your stuff. Yeah, he's great. Um, all right. Uh, one question here from Kenzel. Oh. What's your take on mix bus compression? Uh, hmm. I I uh, probably use mix bus mix bus compression uh, all uh, almost always, but well, definitely mix into a limiter. Um, and so that I know, because I don't want to over overshoot uh, the the actual you know ceiling of what I, how loud things can be. So it's always mm. good to have a limiter at the very very end. And then I use mix bu bus compression. I use a lot of different uh, compressors depending on. Uh, I'd like to shoot out a, a ton of different ones. And then there's all all these sort of artist signature series like the greg wells mix centric that yeah, definitely yeah. has a compressor in there um yeah. so i use that too uh recently started using billy the billy decker bus glue from joey sturgis tones which is interesting mm -hmm. and it feels like it's kind has the sort of an ssl bus compression feel to it and i always like you know compressing a few db two to four db mm -hmm. on the mix bus mm -hmm. on the way on the way out so that's my take. Yeah, same here. Same here. 
Yeah. I usually use a really fast release too. I just try to try to just squeeze things maybe maybe two dB, three dB tops at the loudest the loudest places in the song. Right. Right. Well, cool, man. We're about on the hour here. I think that we've uh, covered a lot of. I don't even know what we've covered. Wow. I didn't know that Paul McCartney refused George Martin's invitation to learn proper musical notation for the fear he would lose his muse. Wow. That's an interesting, I don't know. Maybe I wonder if, if he's have, done that entire, like if he's still, I was like, nope, don't want to. And it makes me think of Elvis Costello too. Why? Because I'm a big fan. But uh, I remember El I remember learning at some point, and maybe again, I'm making it up. Maybe you guys can help me out. But what I remember is that Elvis Costello yeah. was a computer guy, you know, like, like data entry in the 70s and the 80s and he's in the 70s here he records his first album in 1978 i think with a band that wasn't his band i think the name of the band was clover or something like that who were studio musicians of uh, uh, americans and um and he did not learn how to read music until the 80s um after he started to take himself seriously um which wonder, is wonder, weird because he takes himself pretty seriously I wonder if that, I wonder if that comment or that uh, anecdote is found in this book. All you need is ears by George Martin. Um, but yeah, so Bill Reese says I do want to be an insider because so it's so interesting here, you guys. But and that's <laughs> an interesting thing because that's a big. It should be a capitalized but. I am not going to sell you on being an insider because you're the only person that can. Uh, make that decision on your own. It is a commitment to do because I do expect you to do uh, the work and be making music and sharing the music. So it's not not for everyone, actually. Uh, if you mm -hmm. like buying courses and uh, and subscribing to things because it makes you feel good without doing any of the work, this is not for you. Uh, if you like to uh, be a part of a membership and just sort of flow and lurk. This is not necessarily for you either because I'm here to help you get results, but if you don't want results, then I can't really help you, so. And I think you need to know what your results, like what results you want. Yeah. I don't know, and, I think and that's, that's- And that's where the coaching component comes in, is like mm -hmm. when, you, when you, and this is a recent thing that I just started doing now because I want to make sure there's so much content inside now because I'm constantly up, uh, adding more stuff in there and it's overwhelming, right? So I tend to not now, every everyone who joins, uh, I, I sit down with them, uh, schedule a call with them and get to know exactly what they need, uh, what they're trying to achieve, what their goals are. And then I can sort of give them a path through the content. Maybe something isn't relevant to them yet. Maybe they've already learned it and don't need to check it out. Uh, so it's my it's my hope that with these sort of um, early interviews or intro interviews or action calls, what, what have you, you can have a, a, a better plan of action as, as to how to use your membership to actually get results. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm about trying to get you results <laughs> i'm just gonna repeat that over and over and over uh i'm not trust i'm not trying to take your money <laughs> it's too cheap for me to be taking your money i think that's a really good point and i'm yeah. so glad you said it um because that's one of the reasons i like you it's like <laughs> i mean i've been around the block in terms of um the your your competition online you know without naming names we know all the people or a lot of them yeah. Um, and I've been their students as well. And I've bought their products here or there. I followed them, you know, on YouTube where you can learn how to do anything. My God, yeah. on YouTube. Um, Talk about an overwhelming amount. My God, <laughs> I really, I, I could go on, I could go on and on about that. But I, and, and, and then when I met you, um, I think I bought your voice production. Yeah. Expert home vocals. Yeah. Expert home vocals. Cause I needed help with that. Um, and then, you were going to have like a, a call, a conference call, you know, like a big call with people, but the, but I couldn't be there. Number one. And number two, the recording didn't work out on your end. So you said, well, instead, if you want a free half hour or whatever, 15 minutes, um, jump on the call with me, schedule a meeting. And I thought, wow, that's great. And I did. And I had never met you before. Um, 
And we chatted for 15 minutes about stuff. And I was, I remember leaving that going, he's a real guy. Like he's a, he's a real, <laughs> like I, I could, uh, I, I'm interested in him. And I think anyway, he's interested not in me personally, but he's interested in what I'm bringing to the table. He's not just trying to, you know. Yeah. Well, it's that- solve the problem with a magic bullet or something. He's really listening to like, and I, and I, and I have been teaching for a long time myself, you know, 20 plus years myself. Um, so I, I think you and I share that approach to teaching approach to education, to students, to the student teacher kind of mentor relationship and how it's really a two way street all the time. Like I learn more from my students as a teacher. I, oh, absolutely. Like they say you, when you, when you want to learn how to do something, teach that thing. Yeah. And if you can teach that thing, you've learned it. Yeah. And that's something we tend to gloss over and forget because we're all online and we're, there are so many people online uh, and we have these brands and these giant mailing lists and uh, trying to make this content and have these YouTube followings and et cetera. But at the end of the day, this is really just me in this studio making content, learning on my own paying it forward, sharing everything I've learned. I've I've shared everything that I've learned about audio in the last 10 years, and I will continue to do so because, as you say, I don't stop learning just because I have become a teacher. It's I learn from both my students and from other mentors as well. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. So that's just really just how it is. Um, oh, Bill Reese has another question here. So are only in-the-box teachers because he does do his analog thing. So I... I mostly teach in the box stuff and uh, but I don't know about other members in there. You might find other uh, members in there that are doing more sort of hybrid or analog stuff. Mm. uh, But I can't promise you that that you have them there. And I can only teach you about uh, using software and um, and plugins in the box. I do arrangement work with people which is not in the box. I mean, it is if you yeah. want it to be, sure. but I don't know if anyone's listening and need help arranging stuff. Let me know. I'd love to help you out. Um, yeah. And no, I'm not in it for the money either. What yeah. what money? I kind of want to say, what money? Have I ever earned any money at this really? Um, anyway, so and we've you're, got- You're available in there too. So like if, I yeah. mean, you're- Oh, in, in the insiders program, totally. Yeah. yeah, I've worked with Bob on the outside of the program. He and I worked on some things together. Yeah, yeah, yeah that kind of- that happens naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that that really sums it up for what we talked about today. Uh, Insiders does close to new members on Friday. So, and it does not open up until September. So if you want to get results in the next three months and you think that we, at, we inside the insiders <laughs> or we at the insiders can help you uh, achieve the type of results that you're looking for, Feel free to join. Use the link there below. That's uh, scrolling, scroll, scrolling around oh, wow. like a stock market, stock market ticker. <laughs> All right. Now, it just occurred to me that you could also, I mean, whoever's out there listening still as we wrap up, if you wanted to hear what the insiders were making, like yeah. you can go, obviously you can go to edcharlesmusic.com where you hear, you know, my songs were there and they're yeah. free. Um, but Nick also has a Spotify release, Nick Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. Like- um, find the do you have a playlist you should have yeah, an insider's yeah. playlist so i have so i have an audio issues record releaser playlist which is uh not just the insiders but a lot uh but includes the insiders and uh i think all of the the um all of the the one two three four five six seven eight at, at least the eight songs at the bottom the most recently added songs at the bottom they're all from insider members so you can hear how uh well except for chris mcconville's fire because uh i mixed and mastered that song and uh he might be joining insiders this week as hmm. well so it's it's the people that have released music by learning uh with my content but they uh so nick hamilton is in here uh armor by kyle uh, goes by the artist name of the unbranded space mm-hmm. consta is in here constantine from uh from berlin i actually did master that song there's some song called this ain't the place to look for love songs by a charles oh yeah uh, and then <laughs> Mike Shu. so there's there's plenty of 
p- plenty of music there you yeah. can so you can take a listen to uh what what they are releasing and if you uh want to meet some of these people collaborate with some of these people chat with them get mixed feedback from them or me feel free to join insiders there and it's not just me who has said this but other people in the group also i think everybody we look forward to friday yeah. No, we do. I mean, I, I I think at the end of Friday, I'm like, okay. And I think, oh, am I going to have something ready for next week? And usually the answer is mm, maybe. Um, <laughs> every two weeks, yes. But every week, it's hard. It's a tall order. Um, but I look forward to going anyway. Like, I don't know if I got something for this Friday, to tell you the truth. But I know that Constantine might, you know, Nick's probably going to have something. Bob will have something. So, you know, Tim will have another furniture. Oh, he's done with his furniture pieces. But we look forward. I look forward to just being in there with those people because different music, good attitude. It's a great way to spend for me anyway, especially during this very difficult time. Um, Totally. Yeah. It's really nice to get together with everybody. Well, music does bring us together. That's for sure. And so does love. (laughs) Love will bring us together. Okay. Um, All right, Captain Tennille. All right, we're, we're done. done. <laughs> we're done. Or I'm done. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for tuning in to another uh, random episode of Influence yeah. and References. Uh, as always, I'm Bert from Ben Dixon from Audio Issues. Uh, take it easy. Have a good night. And remember to use your ears. Use your ears, not somebody else's. <laughs>